Our topic today is menopause. All women will go through the menopause and the average age is 50 to 52 years. Then the menopause is the cessation of the menstrual cycle and is caused by ovarian failure leading to estrogen deficiency. A woman's average life expenses at birth in the European countries is currently 81 years and is estimated to reach 85 years but 2031. Those European women can expect more than 30 years of postmenopausal life. This population expansion will lead to an increasing importance of the health problems that affect postmenopausal women. Definitions. Menopause is the permanent cessation of menstruation that results from loss of ovarian follicular activity. Natural menopause is recognized to have occurred after 12 consecutive months of amenorrhea for which no other obvious pathological or physiological cause is present. Perimenopause includes the period beginning with the first clinical, biological, and the endocrinological features of the approaching menopause, such as vasomotor symptoms and menstrual irregularity, the ends 12 months after the last menstrual period. Premenopause is a term often used to refer either to one to two years before the menopause or to the late phase of the reproductive period before the menopause. Currently, this term is recommended to use in the first sense. Postmenopause should be defined as whole woman's life from the final menstrual period, regardless of whether the menopause was induced or spontaneous. Menopausal transition is the period before the final menstrual period when variability in the menstrual cycle usually is increased. Climacteric is the phase encompassing the transition from the reproductive state to the non-reproductive state. The menopause itself thus is a specific event that occurs during the climacteric, just the menache is a specific event that occurs during puberty. Abnormal menopause. First type is premature menopause. If the menopause occurs at or below the age of 40, it is said to be premature. Often there is familial diathesis. Treatment by substitution therapy is of value. Delayed menopause. If the menopause failed to occur, even beyond 55 years, it is called delayed menopause. The common causes are constitutional, uterine fibroids, diabetes mellitus, and the estrogenic tumor of the ovary. 
Tomorrow we shall come back to these questions, to this situation in the lecture of endometrial cancer, because you must understand the prolonged menstrual life, prolonged period of menstruation is a risk factor for proliferative changes of endometrium, formation of hyperplasia, and finally, cancer. Artificial menopause. Permanent cessation of ovarian function done by artificial means, for example, surgical removal of ovaries or by radiation is called artificial menopause. Surgical menopause. Menstruating women who have bilateral ophorectomy experience menopausal symptoms. It is sometimes more troublesome than natural menopause. Radiation menopause. The ovarian function may be suppressed by external gamma radiation in women below the age of 40. The castration is not permanent. The menstruation may resume after two years and even conception is possible. Intracavity introduction of radium can cause castration effect by destroying the endometrium and also by depressing the ovarian function. The menopausal symptoms are not so intense and found in surgical menopause or menopause following external radiation. And the chronology of climacteric and menopause. Hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. Few years prior to menopause, along with depletion of the ovarian follicles, the follicles become resistant to pituitary gonadotropins. As a result, effective follicular genesis is impaired with diminished estradiol production. There is a significant fall in the level of serum estradiol from 50 to 300 picogram per milliliter before menopause to 10 to 20 picograms per milliliter after menopause. This decreases the negative feedback effect of hypothalamic pituitary axis resulting in increase in FSH. The increase in FSH is also due to diminished inhibin. Inhibin, a peptide, is secreted by the granulosa cells of the ovarian follicle. The increase of LH occurs subsequently. Distop follicular genesis during this period may result in anovulation, oligoovulation, premature corpus salutum or corpus salutal insufficiency. The sustained level of estrogens may even cause endometrial hyperplasia and the clinical manifestation of menstrual abnormalities prior to menopause. The mean cycle length is significantly shorter. This is due to shortening of the follicular phase of the cycle. Luteal phase length remaining constant. Ultimately, no more follicles are available and even some exist. They are resistant to gonadotropins. Estradiol production drops down 
to the optimal level of 20 picograms per milliliter. It leads to no of endometrial growth. Absence of menstruation. Following menopause, the predominant estrogens is a strong and to a lesser extent estradiol. Serum level of a strong 30 to 70 picogram per milliliter is higher than that of estradiol, 10 to 20 picograms per milliliter. The major source of estrone is peripheral conversion, aromatization of androgens from adrenals mainly and ovaries. The aromatization occurs at the level of muscle and adipose tissue. The trace amount of estradiol is derived from peripheral conversion of estron and androgens. Compared to estradiol, estron is biologically less, about one-tenth potent. With times, the sources fail to supply the precursors of estrogens and about five to 10 years after menopause. There is a sharp fall in estrogen and also the trophic hormones. The woman is said to be in a state of true menopause. Androgens and progesterone. Androgens. After menopause, the stromal cells of the ovary continue to produce androgens because of increase in LH. The main androgens are androstenedione and the testosterone. Though the secretion of androgens from postmenopausal ovary are more, their peripheral levels are reduced due to conversion of androgens to estrone in adipose tissue. However, the cumulative effect is a decrease in estrogen-androgen ratio. This results in increased facial hair growth and a change in voice. As the obese patient convert more androgens into estrone, they are less likely to develop symptoms of estrogen deficiency and osteoporosis. But they are vulnerable to endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial carcinoma. Progesterone. A trace amount of progesterone detected is probably adrenal in origin. Gonadotropins. The secretion of both FSH and LH are increased due to absent negative feedback effect of estradiol and inhibin or due to enhanced responsiveness of pituitary to GnRH. Rates in FSH is about 10 to 20 fold, whereas that of LH is about three fold. GnRH pass uh, section is increased both in frequency and amplitude. During menopause, there is fall in level of prolactin and inhibin. Fall in the level of inhibin lead to increase in the level of FSH from the pituitary. Ultimately, due to physiologic aging, GnRH and above FSH, LH decline along with decline of estrogens. Organ changes typical for menopause. Ovaries. Ovaries shrink in size, become wrinkled and white. 
there is thinning of the cortex with increase in medullary components. There is abundance of stromal cells which have got secretory activity. At this picture, you see the difference between reproductive H ovary with multiple primordial follicles and menopausal ovary with sclerotic changes and absence of primordial follicles. Transvaginal sonographic images of pre- and postmenopausal ovary is also very illustrated. Picture number one or A. In general, premenopausal ovaries have greater volume and contain follicles which are seen as multiple, small, anechoic smooth walled cysts. Picture number two B. In comparison, postmenopausal ovaries have smaller volume and are characteristically devoid of follicular structures. Fallopian tubes show feature of atrophy. The muscle cord becomes thinner, the cilia disappear, and the plica become less prominent. The uterus becomes smaller, and the ratio between the body and the cervix reverts to the one to one ratio. The endometrium becomes thin and atrophic. In some women, however, with high endogenous estrogens, you know already that there is, there is the result of aromatization of androgens, the endometrium may be proliferative or even hyperplastic. The cervical secretion becomes scanty. The vagina becomes narrower due to gradual loss of elasticity. The vaginal epithelium becomes thin. The rugi progressively flatten. There is no glycogen. Dodderline bacillus is absent. The vaginal pH becomes alkaline due to the absence of Dodderline bacillus and production of them by acid. The maturation index, MI, is an inexpensive, often used means to evaluate hormonal influences in women. A specimen to measure the MI may be collected during a vaginal speculum examination at the same time cervical cancer screening is performed. The index report is read from left to right and refers to the percentage of parabasal, intermediate, and superficial squamous cells appearing on a smear with the total sum of all three values equaling 100%. Maturation index parabasal, intermediate, and superficial says in menopausal women is about 10 to 85 to 5. You see the prevalence of intermediate or later parabasal cells. Photomicrographs of cyto uh, cytologic specimens illustrate key points of the maturation index. Generally, a predominance of superficial or superficial and intermediate cells. Picture A in the left side is seen in reproductive age women. Right side picture, a predominance of parabasal cells is seen in menopausal patients with atrophy. The vulva shows features of atrophy too. The labia becomes flattened and the pubic hair becomes scantier. 
the end result is narrow in triatus. Breast fat is reabsorbed and the glands atrophy. The nipples decrease in size. Ultimately, the, brace become, the breasts become flat and pendulous. Bladder and urethra undergo similar changes to those of the vagina. The epithelium becomes thin and is more prone to damage and infection. There may be dysuria, frequency, urge, or even stress incontinence. Loss of muscle tone leads to pelvic relaxation, uterine descent, and anatomic changes in the urethra and neck of bladder. The pelvic cellular tissues become scanty and the ligaments supporting the uterus and the vagina lose their tone. As such pre-existing weakness gets aggravated. Bone metabolism. Normally bone formation, osteoblastic activity and bone resorption, osteoclastic activity are in balance depending on many factors, age, endocrine, nutrition and the genetic. Following menopause, there is loss of bone mass by about 3 to 5% per year. This is due to deficiency of estrogen. Estrogen prevents osteoporosis by several mechanisms. It inhibits osteoclastic activity and it inhibits release of interleukin-1 by monocytes. Estrogen increases absorption of calcium from the gut, stimulates calcitonin secretion from the C cells of the thyroid, and increases 1.25 dihydroxyvitamin D. All these lead to increased bone mineralization. At this picture, you see electron micrographs of tissue obtained from iliac crest biopsy. Left part of picture, normal bone architecture in an individual with normal bone mineral density. Diminished bone architecture is seen in the biopsy from an individual with osteoporosis. Weight gain during postmenopausal period is associated with, an, uh, with a deposition in the abdomen, increased amounts of visceral fat, and the body fat redistribution. They raise the likelihood of developing insulin resistant and subsequent diabetes mellitus and heart diseases. This stems from associated alterations in cardiometabolic risks due to hormone-related declines in energy expenditure and at oxidation. In addition, elder adults have higher percentage of body than younger adults at any age due to muscle mass loss with aging. Cardiovascular system. Risk of cardiovascular diseases is high in postmenopausal women due to deficiency of estrogen. Estrogen prevents cardiovascular disease by several ways. It increases HDL, high density lipoproteins, particularly HDL2, and decrease lower density lipoproteins and total cholesterol. 
it inhibits platelet and macrophage form cell aggregation at the vascular intima it stimulates the release of nitric oxide and prostacycline from vascular endothelium to dilate the blood vessels it prevents atherosclerosis by its antioxidant property dermatologic changes skin changes that may develop during postmenopause include hyperpigmentation age spots wrinkles and the itching that are caused in part by skin aging which results from the synergistic effects of intrinsic aging and photo aging hormonal aging of the skin is also thought to be responsible for many dermal changes these include a reduced thickness due to lower collagen content diminished sebaceous gland secretion loss of elasticity and the decreased blood supply dental changes dental problems may also develop at estrogen level uh, levels when in late postmenopause the buccal epithelium atrophies due to estrogen deprivation resulting in decreased saliva and sensation a bad taste in the mouth increased incidence of cavities and the tooth loss also may occur oral alveolar bone loss is strongly positively correlated with osteoporosis and can lead to tooth loss short-term consequences of menopause my fr my friends please anybody have a small break and write again your names and group in chat everybody please do it now Uh -huh. Anybody, right? Anybody, your name or group or anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, 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 good. Everybody, please do it, my friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, please write. Thank you, everybody. Please do it. Write anything, write anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, short term consequences of menopause. Vasomotor motor symptoms. Hot flashes and night sweats are the commonest symptoms of the menopause. And although they may begin before periods stop, the prevalence of flashes is highest in the first year after the final menstrual period. Although they usually are present for less than five years, some women will continue to flash into their 70s and more. Hot flesh is characterized by sudden feeling of heat followed by profuse sweating. They may also be the symptom of palpitation, fatigue, and weakness. The physiologic changes with hot flashes are perspiration and cutaneous vasodilatation. Both these two functions are under central thermoregulatory control. Low estrogen level is prerequisite for hot flesh. Hot flesh coincides with generic pulse secretion with increase 
in serum LH level. It may last for 1 to 10 minutes and may be at times unbearable. Sleep may be disturbed due to night sweets. Sexual dysfunction. Changes in sexual behavior and activity are common. The term female sexual dysfunction, FSD, is now used. The percentage of women with sexual dysfunction rises from 42 to 88% during the early to late menopausal transition. The underlying reasons for FSD are commonly multifactorial. For example, vaginal dryness, which results from declining levels of estrogen, can cause dyspareunia. Low androgen levels have been implicated in low sexual desire, though the evidence of is conflicting. Non-hormonal factors such as conflict between partners and the life stress or depression are important contributors to a woman's level of interest in sexual activity. In addition, male, male sexual problems should not be overlooked. Sexual problems are classified into various types. Loss of sexual desire, loss of sexual arousal, problems with orgasm, sexual pain such as painful sex or dyspareunia. Psychological symptoms. Psychological symptoms associated with the menopause include depressed mood, anxiety, irritability and mood swings, lethargy and lack of energy. However, most women don't experience major changes in mood at the menopause and the psychological problems are likely to be associated with past problems and the current life stresses. Long-term consequences of menopause. Urogenital atrophy. The lower urinary and the genital tracts have a common embryological origin and are approximated closely in adult women. Estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors are present in the vagina, urethra, bladder, and pelvic floor musculature. Estrogen deficiency after menopause causes atrophic changes within the urogenital tract and is associated with urinary symptoms, such as frequency, urgency, nocturia, incontinence and recurrent infection. These symptoms may coexist with those of vaginal atrophy, including dyspareunia, itching, burning and dryness. Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis affects one in three women and one in 12 men. It is as a skeletal disorder characterized by compromised bone strength predisposing to an increased risk of fracture. Bone strength reflects the integration of two main features, bone density and bone quality. Bone density is expressed as grams of mineral per area or volume and, in any given individuals, is determined by peak bone mass and amount of bone loss. 
Bone mineral density, BMD, is the standard use of bone mass determination and is assessed with dual energy X-ray absorptiometry, DEXA, of the lumbar vertebrae, radius, and the femoral neck. What about risk factors for osteoporosis? Genetic factor. Family history of fracture, particularly a first degree relative with hip fracture. Constitutionally, low BMI, early menopause less than 24 years of age. Environmental factors, cigarette smoking, alcohol abuse, low calcium intake, sedentary lifestyle. Drugs employment, corticosteroids more than 5 mg prednisolone or equivalent daily. Aromatase inhibitors, GnRH analogs. Diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, neuromuscular diseases, chronic liver diseases, malabsorption syndromes, hyperparathyroidism, hyperthyroidism, hypogonadism. Osteoporosis, normative bone mineral density values for sex, age, and ethnicity have been determined. For diagnostic purpose, results of BMD testing are reported as T scores. This measure is standard deviations, the variance of an individual's BMD from the expected for a person of the same sex and the peak bone mass, 25 to 30 years. A T score of minus 2.0 in women, for example, means that her BMD is to standard deviations below the average peak bone mass for a young woman. The fourth category, severe osteoporosis, describes patients who have a T-score below minus 2.5 and who have also suffered a fragility fracture. These are fractures caused by a fall from standing height or lower. Patients are also assigned a Z-score <coughs> which is the standard deviation between the patient's measurement and average bone mass or the patients with the same age and the weight, Z scores lower than minus 2.0, 2.5% of the normal population of the same age, require diagnostic evaluation for secondary osteoporosis. World, uh, World Health Organization criteria for bone disease based on the bone mineral density. Normal BMD, T score between plus 2.5 and minus 1.0. Osteopenia, T score between minus 1.0 and minus 2.5. Osteoporosis. T score at or below minus 2.5. Severe or established osteoporosis. T score at or below minus 2.5 with one or more fractures. Bone quality refers to architecture, turnover damage accumulation, for example, microfractures, and the mineralization. A fracture occurs when a failure-inducing force, which may or may not involve trauma, is applied to osteoporosis bone, osteoporotic bone. Thus, osteoporosis is a significant risk factor for fracture. Fractures are the clinical consequences of osteoporosis. The most common sites of osteoporotic fractures are lower end of radius, 
wrist or collis fracture, proximal femur, hip vertebra. And this picture you see normal kind of picture and the fracture risk is not increased. Contrary, at right part of picture, you see the kind of osteopenia fracture risk increased. Also, fracture is not increased in the left side of picture and the high risk in right side of slide. Cardiovascular diseases. Myocardial infarction and stroke are the primary clinical endpoints. Cardiovascular disease is the most common cause of death in women over 60. CVD accounts or approximately for approximately 40% of deaths in women compared with about 5% due to breast cancer. Before menopause, women have a much lower risk for cardiovascular events compared with men their same age. All phorectomized women are at two to threefold higher risk of coronary heart disease than age-matched premenopausal women. Reasons of, uh, for protection from CVD in premenopausal women are complex, but a significant contribution is assigned to greater high-density lipoprotein levels in younger women, which is an effect of estrogen. However, after menopause, this benefit disappears over time such that a 70-year-old woman begins to have a CVD risk identical to that of male of comparable age. The risk of CVD increases exponentially for women as they enter menopause and as estrogen levels decline. Diagnosis. History taking and investigations are very important for the diagnosis of menopause and menopausal disturbances. Among of history points, you must pay attention for symptoms, periods, and contraception. Hot flashes and nice sweets are typical for menopausal age. Vaginal dryness is also could be a first or second symptom of climacteric syndrome. Also, they could be other symptoms. Very important, the date of last menstrual period. Could she be pregnant? Ask yourselves. Frequency, heaviness, and duration of periods is also important. Employment of contraception now and in the past is also important item. Gynecological history. It's very important to know about possible hysterectomy or ophorectomy in the patient. Past medical and the surgical history. Risk factor for osteoporosis. You already saw the table of these risk factors. Confirm deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism as a factor of contraindication of uh, hormonal treatment of postmenopausal problems. Risk factors for cardiovascular disease, for example, smoking, hypertension, diabetes. Breast cancer, benign breast diseases, and the date last mammogram, if applicable. Does she have migraines? Ask the patient. Current medication. Does she take alternative or complementary therapies? All of them are very important of items of diagnosis. Family history in close family members. Breast 
ovarian and the bowel cancer. Confirm deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. Cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis. Investigations. FSH only helpful in diagnosis is in doubt, such as below age 40 and the levels in menopausal range, more than 30 international units per liter. Luteinizing hormone, estradiol, and progesterone are of no value in the diagnosis of ovarian failure. Thyroid function test, 3T4 and thyroid stimulating hormone as abnormalities of thyroid function can be confused with menopausal symptoms. Testosterone levels are of uncertain value. BMD if significant risk factor for osteoporosis. Treatment of climacteric syndrome. Hormonal replacement therapy. Overview. More than 50 HRT preparations which feature different strength, combination, and the routes of administration are available. HRT can be given either systemically for hot flashes and osteoporosis or vaginally, topically for local symptoms such as vaginal dryness. In non-hysterectomized women, HRT consists of estrogen combined with a progestogens. Estrogens. Estrogens used in HRT include estradiol, estrone, and estriol, which also chemically synthesized from soybeans or yams, are molecularly identical to the natural human hormone. Conjugated equine estrogens containing about 50 to 65% estrogen sulfate with the remainder being equine estrogens, mainly aquiline sulfate, are also used. Warning and precautions with estrogen administrations. Estrogens should not be used in women with any of the following conditions. Undiagnosed abnormal genital bleeding. Known suspected or history of breast cancer, known or suspected estrogen-dependent neoplasia, active or prior venous thromboembolism, active or recent, for example, within the past year, arterial thromboembolic disease, such as stroke or myocardial infarction liver dysfunction or disease, known hypersensitivity to the ingredients of estrogen preparation, known or suspected pregnancy. Estrogen should be used with caution in women with the following conditions, dementia, gallbladder disease, hypertriglyceride emia, prior holostatic jaundice, hypothyroidism, fluid retention plus cardiac or renal dysfunction, severe hypokalemia, calcemia, prior endometriosis, hepatic hemangiomas. The progestogens used in HRT are almost all synthetic and derived from plant sources. They are structurally, structurally different from progesterone. Most commonly they are 17-hydroxyprogesterone derivatives, didrogesterone, medroxyprogesterone acetate, 19 nortestosterone derivatives, 
nor etisterone or levonorgestrel. Warning with progestogens administration, meningioma. This tumor is sensitive for progestogens and the progestins may induce the development and the growth of meningioma. Avoid it. Types of systemic HRT. First, estrogen alone in hysterectomized women. Only in this, this group of patients you can use estrogens without parallel administrations of progesterone. Estrogen plus progestogen in non-hysterectomized women. It's necessary to avoid the hyperplasia of endometrium. Estrogen and cyclical progestogen in perimenopausal women. Continuous combined estrogen progesterone, no bleed HRT in postmenopausal women. We prefer estrogen and cyclical progestogens in relatively young women which desire to preserve their menstrual like bleedings. In postmenopause, pose preferable way, of course, is continuous manner of administration of estrogen progestogens. Routes of administration of estrogens. Oral transdermal, subcutaneous, vaginal. Percutaneous estrogen gel, one gram applicator of gel, delivering one milligram of estradiol daily is to be applied onto the skin over the anterior abdominal wall or thighs. Effective blood level of estradiol, 92 one to zero picograms per milliliter can be maintained. Transdermal patch. It contains 3.2 milligrams of 17 beta estradiol, releasing about 50 micrograms of estradiol in 24 hours. Physiological level of estradiol to a strong is maintained it should be applied below the waistline and change it twice a week. Skin reaction, irritation, and itching have been noted with their use. Roots of administrations of progestogen. Oral, transdermal, intrauterine, levonorgestrel. Typical administration is medroxyprogesterone acetate, 2.525 mg a day can be used. Low levonorgestrel into uterine system with daily release of 10 microgram of levonorgestrel per 24 hours. It protects the endometrium from hyperplasia and cancer. At the same time, it has got no systemic progestin side effects. Other hormones used at the postmenopause. Tibalon is a systemic steroid compound that itself is inert, but on absorption is converted to metabolic with estrogenic, progestogenic, and the androgenic actions. It is classified as HRT and used in postmenopausal women. Testosterone, patches, and implica implants may be used to improve libido. This kind of treatment is not registered in our country yet. Treatment of local symptoms. Some women don't wish to take or cannot tolerate systemic HRT and simply require relief of local symptoms, which are usually urogenital. Synthetic or conjugated equine estrogens should be avoided as they are well absorbed 
from the vagina. The options available are low dose natural estrogens such as vaginal estriol by cream or pessary or estradiol by tablet or ring. Treatment is needed in the long term. If not lifelong, as symptoms return on cessation of treatment. With the recommended dose regimens, no adverse endometrial effects should be incurred and a progestogen, a progestogen need not added in non hysterectomized women. Monitoring prior to and during HRT. Physical examination, including pelvic examination. Blood pressure recording. Breast examination and mammography. Cervical cytology. Pelvic ultrasonography. To measure endometrial thickness, normal than 4 to 5 millimeters. What are the benefits of HRT? They decrease vasomotor symptoms, urogenital symptoms, and improve sexuality. They decrease the risk of osteoporosis and the risk of colorectal cancer. Estrogen is effective in treating hot flashes. Improvement usually is noted within four weeks. Maximum therapeutic response usually achieved by three months. Should be continued for at least one year of symptoms of or symptoms of an recur. The most common indicator for a prescription of HRT often is used for fewer than five years. HRT decreases the risk of spine and hip and other osteoporotic fractures. Most epidemiological studies suggest continuous and lifelong use is required for HRT to be an effective method of preventing fracture. The efficiency of alternatives such as bisphosphonates in perimenopausal or early postmenopausal women remains uncertain. HRT is significantly cheaper than alternative therapies such as bisphosphonates, strontium renolate, and the parathyroid hormone. HRT decreases the risk of colorectal cancer by about one to three per three. Little known about risk when treatment is stopped or in high risk population. Currently, prevention of colonic cancer is not an indication for HRT. Prevention of colorectal cancer is only additional benefit for the main effects of HRT. Risks of HRT. HRT increases the risk of breast cancer, risk of endometrial cancer with an opposed estrogens, increased risk of venous chamber embolism, risk of gallbladder disease. Unopposed estrogen increase the risk of endometrial cancer. The relative risk is 2.3. Risk increase with prolonged use. Relative risk 9.5 for more than 10 years. Risk remains increased for five or more years after stopping. Relative risk is 2.3. The risk is not eliminated completely with the addition of monthly sequential progestogens, especially if used for more than five years. No increased risk has been found 
with continuous combined HRT. Venous thromboembolism, HRT more than doubles the risk of VTE, but absolute risk remains small. I want to underline it. The VTE is more likely in the first year of HRT. Age, obesity, and thrombophilia significantly increase risk of VTE. Using HRT after VTE has increased the risk of recurrence in the first year of use. Transdermal HRT may be associated with the lower risk than oral. Gallbladder disease. HRT appears to increase the risk of gallbladder disease, but risk increase with age and obesity. Women who use HRT may have silent pre-existing disease. Risk of breast cancer with HRT. HRT confers a similar degree of risk to late natural menopause. Every year the menopause is naturally delayed, the risk increase by 2.8. With HRT, the risk increase by 2.3 per year. The risk is, in, is dependent on duration of HRT. The effect is not sustained once HRT is stopped. Five years after stopping, the risk is the same as for women who have never had HRT. My friends, pay attention for this idea. The risk of breast cancer with HRT is dependent on the regimen. Greatest with combined estrogen, progestogen, HRT. Less with unopposed estrogen, but increase the risk of endometrial cancer. Cardiovascular disease. The time, dose, and possible type of HRT, however, may be critical in determining cardiovascular effect. Women who started HRT with 10 years of the menopause had a lower risk of coronary heart disease than women who started later. We like to speak about window of possibility, window of opportunities for administration of each HRT. The best benefits of HRT are possible in the age of prescription, not later than 60 years age and not later than 10 years of menopause, my friends. Remember, not later than 60 years, not later than 10 years of menopause. Remember it, please. What about complementary and alternative medicine? Phytoestrogens. Phytoestrogens is a flavones are plant-derived compounds that beat to estrogen receptors and have both estrogen agonist and antagonists properties. They are found in soy products and the red clover in some and outline subsequently data supporting their effectiveness for vasomotor symptoms treatment show non-conclusive efficiency. With soy products, although the mechanisms of action are not fully understood, they appear to be to the estrogen receptors. For this reason, one should not assume these dietary supplements are safe for women with estrogen-dependent cancer. 
lifestyle changes. Practice that lower core body temperature, such as cooling the room, dressing in layers, and consuming cool drinks may temporarily help with night sweets and flashing. However, behavior efforts to curb the frequency of hot flashes have no firm support. For example, little evidence demonstrates the efficiency of relaxation techniques, acupuncture, exercise, and yoga to control vasomotor, vasomotor complaints. Remember, my, my friends, that the, uh, that the basis of reduction of symptoms of menopause, climacteric syn syndrome, is employment of hormonal treatment, HRT. It is the basis. Use it in patients without contraindications for this type of therapy. It's a gold standard of correction of these pathologies. Thank you for your attention, my friends. Now, please, everybody, fix your names again at the list. OK, everybody do it. You are welcome. Start to work with case reports. We shall discuss these case reports with Group C on Discord platform at 12.30. Come there. Group D will discuss clinical cases with Tatiana Mikhailovna at this time too. Please, everybody, write your names again. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you can ask me now or at practical class. Have you any questions, my friends? Is everything clear for you? Mm -hmm. You are welcome. You are welcome. Okay, Group C, see you at Discord platform.